Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. I regularly get asked what other gameplay and mechanics are there beyond the current roadmap that is planned for Star Citizen and that it's going to have in the future. In this video, we're going to briefly talk about mechanics and tech that we know about that is currently not addressed by the roadmap. Gameplay area. Jump points are essential to connect star systems together. Some might be discoverable as part of the exploration gameplay, but there will be permanent ones connecting all of the star systems together. There are around 120 systems potentially planned on paper at the moment, though at release expect maybe only up to 40 to start with, and they'll add more after that. These star systems require planets, and they are building out tech still currently for cities, new biomes, weather, water interaction, environmental hazards. Uh, various points of interest both on ground and in space, as well as ways to navigate them with maps and tools. Space as well requires a huge amount more to bring it up to the level of detail that they want, but it needs bits of interest there and to be populated with lots of different things and items and derelicts and stuff like that. Eventually the gas cloud tech will be used to make Crusader, the gas giant, that will finish off the basics of the Stanton system. So once they've done that, they'll be adding a few more parts to Stanton, admittedly, the Aaron Halo, a asteroid field with securities and customs gates, fleshing it out with more areas of interest. But once that's done, then they expand upon that and use that to make other systems, planets and areas. Mechanics. So the major ones are covered in the roadmap. I suppose in the shorter term are salvage, repair, refueling. But there's lots of gameplay mechanics that have been mentioned previously. Medical. This is going to be ranging from stabilizing a downed character to receiving treatment to heal a ruined limb or um, life-threatening damage to your body. Some of this will require tools, medipens. Others will require medical beds. They've talked about uh, tier 1 to tier 3 wounds being treated in these facilities or beds. Tier 1 being life-threatening, tier 3 being a minor injury, tier 2 is like ruined limbs. We are expecting the dragging of in-capped players as well and the respawning of players potentially at these tier 1 beds and medical facilities. Exploration and survey. This covers a huge range of gameplay. Long range scanning will detect points of interest. There needs to be things for players to discover in deep space, on planets and moons, derelicts, asteroid fields, sites for outposts, the ability to survey those site locations and asteroid fields. This also requires a system to have and save information and data as a sellable commodity or a way of trading that info with other players. There could be a huge range of large asteroids and planetoids, alien stations, uh, abandoned stations and more just waiting to be discovered. This is also true of exploring a moon or planet. There needs to be a number of interesting things to do and scan down so that you can find loot, pirate bases, salvage sites, alien tech, all that sort of jazz. So just interesting visuals and visuals and, and the way they build out these areas on planets and moons, big, like beautiful vistas, um, interesting mountain ranges. That's all sort of part of it as well. In a lot of ways, it's very connected to the science mechanics, those exploration mechanics. And science covers, again, a lot of different mechanics. Farming, sort of, is one of them. Literally farming using the Endeavour's biodome or a plot of land. And there's also going to be overclocking um, so that components can be tweaked and made potentially more powerful permanently. Or at least there might be some downsides to that. They might overheat qu more quickly, that sort of stuff. Research, so the gathering of data and then using that to either make more valuable data or to learn some information in general about a particular area or item or whatever. Uh, potentially get more missions from that. Drug manufacture may be a thing as well. Well, there are modules on the Endeavour that allow for the potential manufacture of drugs and chemicals. Um, I do hope actually that they go more into manufacture in general and potentially they could allow the manufacture of um, munitions and weapons and ammo and, and things like that. But also eventually that could go into ships, but we'll have to wait and see. There could be the discovery and cataloging of like data collection of animals, plants, locations and more. Data running is also an important mechanic, storing data as cargo. So that could be research data potentially, intercepting and transferring data needs to be done there as well, and potentially um, data hacking so that you can actually hack data lines for mechanics for missions, but also so you can steal data from players or NPCs trying to communicate it to each other. Land claims. Players will be able to survey areas of land to see what materials are under it and then build 
outposts or otherwise exploit the mineral wealth of an area. You can sell land and the data you've collected on it, use a prospector to knock up rocks on land that you own, or build appropriate structures using a pioneer or otherwise transporting extractors for gas, liquids, and minerals. Base building with security is going to be part of this. In UEE areas, you will need a land claim to ensure no one steals your plot. This will also give you the protection of the UEE. There's lots of mechanics behind this as well for security and that sort of stuff. Uh, less secure areas will need to be protected with NPCs, players, and defense structures, or in some way hidden. But there's a lot of land claim protections and mechanics behind this, um, like alert beacons and stuff like that that might happen. Buildings will also require power and act similarly to the way that ships work, requiring maintenance. We don't know the full extent of base building, but we do hope that it will allow you to pretty much live in a location, storing your ships and assets there potentially, though this would also mean that they would be vulnerable to attack and theft. Bounty hunting and outlaw gameplay. At the moment, there is little reason to be a pirate or outlaw. The risk reward just isn't there it's just risk with very little reward but at some point there will be much better systems for this and actual gameplay areas for it different systems that are more outlaw run and less lawful uh, areas will have their own laws breaking them will affect your reputation with factions in that area some crimes will cause npc security or a faction to chase you for a period of time this can be being caught with prohibited items being caught attacking a character or otherwise being caught trying to commit a crime your reputation with a faction, whether that's the UEE, an individual pirate org, or Crusader security or something, will affect how they react to you more long term. If that's very low, that reputation, they may attack you on sight. Moreover, bounty hunting will be a thing. Certain NPCs and players will have missions generated to capture or kill them. There will be less than lethal weapons, but we don't know how the capture of a player will work. Obviously, very few players will want to be knocked out or unable to act for long periods of time, so that can't really be an in-game mechanic. We'll have to see how they implement that. People as cargo and for missions need to be a thing as well, so this could be VIPs that you're transporting that you need to look after. Um, in the Genesis Starline, for example, there might you might have a load of passengers that require servicing as you're going around, um, but this could also be slaves or people in cryo containers, uh, or NPC bounties that you've got, that needs to all be handled in some way. Smuggling again, outlaw gameplay, but um, we need to have the ability to hide cargo in ships, potentially on our person. There will be cargo scans and inspections, and there's going to be various ways of like hiding cargo uh, and that sort of stuff from those inspections or moving it around and tricking those customs officers. Boarding and ship capture. So more of a merging of a lot of features coming together. We will be able to board ships, disable them in some ways by like taking out their power plants or engines, for example, that will cripple a ship until they're repaired or replaced. There will also be distortion damage to do this temporarily, but players and NPCs will be able to board ships and capture them and defend them but there will be some mechanics behind capturing ships and what you do with them afterwards based on who's um were they uh, are you an outlaw are they were an outlaw ship that sort of stuff will you just scrap them will you be able to keep them and then uh, reinstall them maybe pretend that they are a legit ship and resell it that sort of stuff then there's going to be some mechanics behind that when just not entirely sure what E-War and hacking mechanics are also sort of, I suppose, partly related to this. They've talked previously about security and NFDs, so the multifunction displays and controls, enabling you to depressurize certain areas of your ship, turn on and off gravity, open uh, doors, close and lock them. Um, hacking will allow you to open some doors, disable control systems, that sort of stuff. You might also have access to explosives and other types of tool to open door and breach as well, and not just hacking. E-War is another thing. This could be spoofing signals, causing interference, disabling systems, countering targeting, or using an E-War suite. Quantum interdiction is also needed, so players will uh, need ways of pulling ships out of quantum travel and potentially slowing them from going into quantum travel again. Survival mechanics, they've talked about the need to eat and drink and shower as well, but we don't know exactly what form this will take. Don't expect heavy survival mechanics where you have to constantly monitor your health and thirst, but expect the need that occasionally you might have to have a eat or a drink, otherwise you may get a debuff or something like that. Uh, all of these gameplay mechanics will have associated missions that will be generated by the dynamic economy, god AI, or subsumption, whatever you want to call it. Service beacons that players create will also encompass these gameplay mechanics depending on how robust the system is. NPCs may also be able to control and complete 
these missions. Missions and their rewards will be shareable in some way in the future as well. Subsumption is a blanket term for AI and all of the associated dynamic gameplay, mission generation, economy, a load of the back end, uh, the spawning of loot and NPCs, that sort of stuff. We will get smarter NPCs, eventually hireable NPCs. This will go from individual NPCs that you might want to have as officers or on a small ship, all the way up to full crews. Also, the ability to hire escorts. They do want players to be a better option than NPCs, and there will be limits to the amount of NPCs that you can hire. Also, AI modules might allow turrets to be fired in a semi-automated fashion as well on some of your ships, uh, although they haven't gone into exactly how AI modules will work, but it's suspected that they will give you some limited functionality. You can program them to uh, shoot certain objects sort of like automatically, but they'd be likely to be derpier than an NPC. There will be the removal of armistice zones, replacing them with physical security and NPCs walking about, um, defense turrets and patrols and that sort of stuff. Um, ways that the game resolves the issues of players fighting and trying to do odd things um, or griefing or whatever. That will all be handled with in-game systems is the idea that aren't sort of like, well, you just can't fire your weapons. Drones will be a thing as well for rearming, repairing, refueling, scouting, and possibly defense as well. Uh, some of these uh, drone sort of features will be automated AI, others will be controllable by players. At some point, uh, we will have aliens as well, so Vandal, Banu, Tavarin, and Xi'an, and maybe the Kerfak. Their AI should be a bit different from human NPC AI. There will also be alien creatures and animals. These will have life cycles and react differently to different stimulus. Uh, they need to eat, they need to come and live their lives. We don't know exactly what interaction we're going to have with animals. We might have the ability to do big game hunting missions or running away from xenomorphs or science missions to collect data on them. Pets are also a stretch goal, uh, so we should have them at some point as well. Pets might be pretty simple. They might just be aesthetic items that you have on you, or they might be pretty jumping around your ship or something. Who knows at the moment? Economy stuff. A dynamic economy with deeper persistence is essential for the game. Missions will be generated based on economic needs and activity in an area. Items will be priced on the value of materials needed to make them, as well as the simulated time to make them and general demand. The actual purchase of ships in game with Alpha UEC will be implemented at some point. It looks like we will have rentable ships with Alpha UEC in the persistent universe with 3.3. Um, which will be very similar to going to buy ships, but I suppose it will be for a limited time or you might just lose them once they get destroyed, that sort of stuff. Uh, shops on ships are going to be a thing as well. The Banu Merchantman is supposed to have shops on it. So player run shops on ships and potentially on stations and outposts should be available in some form. There may be other economic systems like system wide or planet wide sort of like um, economies where you might be able to have an auction house or something like that. Don't know about that yet, but something like that probably needs to exist. Uh, modularity and customization. Ships are getting deeper customization through subcomponents, which is literally uh, other components you can use to augment um, your like engines and your uh, power plants and weapons and stuff like that uh, to make them better at certain areas or uh, and weaker in others. Uh, more items are also going to be added, but there's also going to be swappable modules for ships like the Caterpillar. So that's enhanced modularity there. Each of its rooms can be swapped out for a different type of room. So you might change its cargo bay to a armory or a, a set of bunk beds for crew to live there or um, maybe a station for more dragonflies to, to get refuel, rearmed and repaired in. Uh, this is true of other ships as well, including ships like the Retaliator, which has uh, swappable cargo and torpedo bays and stuff like that. Ships will have the ability to be painted. Some interior options with furniture may be customizable. There will be rentable and customizable habs and hangars, living areas on some of the planets and moons and stations. On the tech side, so um, server side, object container streaming is needed. 3.3 does have the client side version of this, but the server side enables them to have more efficient servers uh, by standing by or making certain areas inactive when not in use on the server. So that reduces server load and allows them to have uh, potentially more players, but also capital ships and stuff like that in the persistent universe. That sort of stuff is needed to have server sizes beyond 50 players uh, and to have those big capital ships flying around, although they might not be put in straight away afterwards. Uh, server meshing is another important part of Star Citizen's persistent universe. 
It allows servers to be spun up and down for individual object containers based on population and load, potentially allowing for everyone to be in the same mega server by seamlessly stitching these servers together. Multi-grid physics tech is also needed for ship-to-ship -ship docking, large morphing ships like the Hull series and the Hull C compressing down and, and opening up so it can have cargo on it. It's also essential for parasite docking, so the P-52, for example, being docked with the Constellation and then um, detaching, and if ships have uh, like modules that they can detach, so the Endeavour can detach from its, um, its rear section, so it can have like a lab running in space its rear section but can also detach uh, the front section to go fly around or do exploration or to escape. There are a large range of ships that we're waiting on as well that aren't addressed on the roadmap at the moment. Uh, the Carrick Exploration ship, the Banu Merchantman, the Redeemer which does require a second concepting phase, the Genesis Starliner, the Polaris, the Endeavour Modular Science ship, something I'm very much looking forward to, the Hercules Starlifter, the Apollo Medivac, the Mercury Star Runner, the 100 series of starter ships, the Vulcan utility ship, the Nova Tank, the X-1 luxury bike, the Pioneer, the Prowler, uh, the Crucible, that's the repair ship, the Orion massive strip miner, the Hull series A to E, uh, military versions of ships like the F-7A um, Hornet, uh, the F-8 Lightning, the Idris, m &P, the Javelin, Pegasus, Bengal, um, maybe even the Redemption Super Dreadnought, so that's all cabinet ships I just mentioned, the big ones. Uh, there will be lots of other Vandal and Alien ships too. We know some of the Vandal ones like the Kingship, Harvester, Void Bomber, Mauler, Stinger, among others, that will all get added to the game at some point. Now, most of those ships, the military ones uh, that I mentioned, um, and the, the larger ones, um, they may be Squadron 42 Episode 1 dependent or partly dependent. So stuff that Squadron 42 Episode 1 has will be absorbed into the Persistent Universe. Uh, lots of that's being kept secret. A lot of that is very specific to Squadron 42 Episode 1. And what I mean by that is like the Idris M uh, and the Idrises that have been made for that, they are the Stanton. That's the name of that Idris. It's going to have its own personality. They want a more generic Idris uh, M and P to be used in the Persistent Universe. So the, the, the ones that players will be using are not going to be that exact one and as such there may be slight differences or potentially major differences between the Idrises that we have um, in the Persistent Universe and the one that is in Squadron 42 Episode 1 if you see what I mean. That, what I'm saying is, is that some of the ships for Squadron 42 Episode 1 require further work to be put into the Persistent Universe. Some other bits, so gadgets for first person shooter stuff will be a thing, so think personal shields, more grenade types, claymores, holograms, stuff like that, hacking tools, C4. Uh, EVA packs will simulate gravity as well by thrusting you in an appropriate direction. Uh, Titan suits, they're going to be super heavy armor, probably like power loaders from Alien. Um, some customization they will be for combat. Uh, command and control gameplay will enable us to issue orders and command ships from a central map or terminal. Uh, we will also have course plotting in some form too. The Moby Glass will expand with a large range of apps for various uses. Life support and decompression will be coming in properly at some point. A revamped flight model and better multi crew is coming. And uh, that's sort of like being worked on from patch to patch. And it's actually being suggested that those will be done or implemented in some form by the end of the year. There will be constant balance tweaks and that sort of stuff for ships weapons, FPS gear, times to kill for larger ships will be getting higher so that repairing of them is more important and there's more of a chance that ships will be disabled due to systems being damaged and then be able to be repaired um, so that boarding will be a thing and um, just a single ship like a Hornet might not be able to take on a Constellation because it might have too much shield regen and too much hull uh, and the, the players might be able to run around and repair it before it actually gets knocked out, stuff like that. So some ships are not going to be suitable for taking out others, um, like a single fighter, that, that sort of thing, if you see what I mean. Uh, time to kill for players may also potentially be rising to, knocking down players, stunning them, then bleeding out. These will all be things, as well as that medical gameplay I mentioned earlier. They don't want players getting one shot every time from super long range after they've been flying for 30 minutes on a mission though choice of armor and gear will also play a part in this and if you do get shotgunned in the face repeatedly i mean you're going to go down there are still plans for vr integration at some point as well as vulcan and direct x12 integration i believe i can't think of anything else major uh, that's not on the roadmap at the moment obviously 
all of the systems that we currently have in game, the ones that they're currently on the roadmap and all of the ones I mentioned will evolve based on player feedback, but also um, as they get more and more systems and modules and stuff online, they'll evolve it to be better, be more balanced, have a bit more depth to them. We've got mining at the moment, stuff like that. They are, they're tweaking that, they're evolving that at the moment, uh, trying to make it an interesting little mini game to do. There's going to be things for you to do on your ship while you're quantum traveling around. They need to tweak the distances and length of time it takes you to get from um, one planet to another planet because that could be between three to, to ten minutes uh, at the moment, things like that. So uh, all of that sort of stuff is changing and being tweaked. After CitizenCon, we will sit down and we will try and plot out um, exactly how some of these mechanics might take form and where they might fit in a actual roadmap going into the future. We'll do some guesstimates, but we'll try and make them as accurate as possible for a full roadmap, potentially. Today's video is brought to you by Frontier Pilot Simulator. Frontier Pilot Simulator is a story-driven sci-fi economy, exploration, and cargo flight sim. Players will have to manage profits, navigation, unpredictable weather conditions, realistic controls, and the environment. There is thousands of upgrades and customizations for your craft. The game is in Steam Early Access and continues to evolve with new updates, alien hunting, dialogue panels, optimized and a new ship all added recently. It also has Steam Workshop integration. You can try Frontier Pilot Simulator at the link below with a 30% discount. Every month we have a ship giveaway, this time for September. It's a Sabre Raven, a game package, and a CitizenCon digital goodies pack. All you need to do to be in for a chance of winning is be subscribed to my YouTube channel and comment on any of my videos during the month. Thanks for watching, guys. I look forward to your comments. Take care, and I'll see you in the verse.